Hello guys, it's Angelina and Dima here from Walking Edge World. In this video we'll be sharing with you the worst hiking gear to avoid of 2023. As the year is coming to an end, we wanted to share this series with you. There will be gear items that we didn't like at all or at least didn't fully enjoy. We're going to share our reflections on these products and why they didn't meet our expectations. There will be featured brands like Forklass, Quechua, Nature Hike, Unigear and OneWind. Let's dive in! The first product is a Forklass MT900 Trekking Tarp Tent. When we found this tent on the website, we were pleasantly surprised by its lightweight and relatively low price compared to top brands like MSR, Big Agnes and others. We decided to purchase this tent, but our trouble started right from the beginning. The color in reality turned out brighter and thus more easily soiled than we expected. And during the first setup, insects swarmed to it like bees to honey. The tent literally acted as a magnet, attracting all the bugs that were around. Moreover, these insects stuck to the tent's fabric, leaving traces of mosquitoes and flies, making the tent look dirty on its very first day of use. We also didn't like the additional pole installation system, which is not included in the kit, as it requires searching for branches in the forest, and what if there is no forest nearby? Otherwise, the tent becomes very cramped and uncomfortable. The vestibules were also of a small size, and no matter how we tried to tighten the guidelines, the tent's fabric still sacked overhead, taking up valuable space inside. We are not fond of the extra effort required to set up the corner poles. One of the poles was very hard to fit, and although we initially thought it was a flaw, we eventually managed to install it with great effort. To add to our disappointments, we noticed that the tent fly was torn, a problem we hadn't encountered with any tents before as it was too thin and easily tore on a tiny twig. This was very disappointing for us. Next on the list is Nature Hike sleeping bag. We decided to replace our old one that got damaged due to the moisture getting inside. Comparing weights, the new sleeping pad was similar, not lighter or heavier. It looked similar to our previous one, but had a slightly different honeycomb shape pattern. Upon receiving our order, we immediately noticed a difference in the material and it raised concerns because it was very noisy and crunchy. This noise became especially annoying at night when any slight movement produced a loud rustle throughout the tent. This was the main drawback of the sleeping pad. We were also disappointed that this pad had a different valve construction consisting of two parts, making it inconvenient to release excess pressure. Moreover, inflating it was challenging due to the tight membrane and an unpleasant loud whistle accompanied the process. In general, this sleeping pad let us down, and we plan to replace it with our usual one featuring a regular valve and a less noisy material. This Unigear hand warmer seemed interesting to us because it could warm your hands with the built-in heaters on its sides. Additionally, it functioned as a regular power bank with a USB-A output and a USB-C input. The inclusion of a battery level indicator on the face of the power bank was also a neat feature. However, when we started using this device, we realized that the heating element wasn't as powerful as expected in the cold. Additionally, the battery itself tends to discharge quickly in cold temperatures, depriving us of sufficient warmth. This device needs to be kept in a pocket, or it's even better to have one in each pocket, which of course increases the weight of your backpack and is not very practical. Besides, we found it lacking in having only one USB-A output and the weight of this device wasn't so light either. Therefore, we decided to use another device instead. Forklass MT500 Air sleeping pad was initially one of our favorites, seemingly a successful purchase. However, once we started using it, we quickly realized that it wasn't what we expected. The material and build quality were good. This sleeping pad alarmed us with something else. When lying on it, especially on your side, one of the most comfortable sleeping positions, the tubular design caused discomfort by pressing against the ribs. The discomfort comes from the fact that the sleeping pad has a tube-like shape instead of the honeycomb structure, like our usual sleeping pads. Initially, we didn't pay much attention to this, thinking it wouldn't matter. However, the tube started to become a significant issue causing discomfort. On the other hand, this sleeping pad has two valves, one for inflation and the other for deflation, which is a good solution and we liked it. It also has additional silicone patches to prevent your sleeping bag from sliding off. 
but despite all these advantages, its tube-like shape was a deal-breaker, as it didn't suit us at all. We also didn't like that the cover was quite small, making it difficult to pack the sleeping pad into it. Next on our list are these Quechua MH500 trekking poles. While these poles are well made, with sturdy materials and quality plastic fasteners, and overall there was nothing bad to say about these poles. But when we learned about the more compact design with the same functionality, these poles suddenly lost their appeal to us. We found them impractical due to their inability to collapse into a compact format. This made it inconvenient to carry them when not needed, you can just hide them in your backpack. And strapping them to the backpack created problems with length, hindering the ability to set the backpack down or sit with it comfortably. These long poles are always in the way. It's also very inconvenient if you, for example, make short trips on public transport, these long poles stick out, forcing you to put the backpack in the bus luggage compartment. Consequently, we stopped using these trekking poles and are relieved to have made the decision. And for the cherry on top, we have this ultralight one weed survival shelter. It was sent to us for testing, initially intrigued us with this incredibly light weight. We were amazed when we received this package, incredibly light and taking no space in your backpack. And besides, you have a full-fledged shelter for the night. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case with this shelter, as it turned out to be far from a standard tent. It lacks the ability to fully protect from rain, wind and adverse weather conditions. While it can be used as a windbreak, it fails to shield from the rain. The company offers an additional rain fly and support structure, but this adds weight, prompting the question of why not opt for a regular tent. Moreover, you will have to sleep on the ground without the floor. We have no experience of sleeping on the ground, but we know that insects won't make you wait long if you go hiking in summer. And in winter, you can't do without a good quality tent. In conclusion, we found this tarp tent suitable only as an additional windbreak. The absence of a floor and the need for additional components made it less practical for us. But we are glad to test it for people who are considering purchasing something similar and perhaps clarify some of the doubts. These were the items that didn't meet our expectations this year, and we hope this video helps you make informed decisions and the right choice. Personal preferences play a significant role, and what didn't work for us might suit others. We we'll welcome your comments and experiences with items that didn't work for you, as well as suggestions on what items should be avoided. Thank you so much for being with us and watching this video until the end. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. We're making lots of hiking and backpacking content. Have a great day everybody and see you next time very soon. Bye!